Hi friend, welcome back to Olden Goldens. Recently, we have received somber news about the passing of some extraordinary talents. Today's episode is dedicated to honoring their memory. We will also recap the stars we have recently lost. Before we begin, we kindly ask for your support. If this video or the legacies of these remarkable individuals have touched your life, please consider giving this video a thumbs up as a sign of respect and remembrance. Fitness guru Richard Simmons' death was a result of complications from recent falls and heart disease, according to his brother, Lenny Simmons. A spokesperson for the Simmons family, Tom Este, told People on Wednesday, this morning, Richard Simmons' brother Lenny received a call from the L.A. County Coroner's Office. He explained, The coroner informed Lenny that Richard's death was accidental due to complications from recent falls and heart disease as a contributing factor. The toxicology report was negative other than medication Richard had been prescribed. The family wishes to thank everyone for their outpouring of love and support during this time of great loss. His death was originally deferred, as additional testing by the medical examiner's office was needed. Simmons was found dead on July 13th, a day after his 76th birthday at his Hollywood Hills home. Born and raised in Louisiana, Simmons admitted he weighed 268 pounds when he graduated high school. By adjusting his eating habits and incorporating moderate exercise, he managed to lose weight. It was a methodology that he shared with millions over his career. He moved to Los Angeles in the 1970s and opened a fitness studio, Slimmons in Beverly Hills. His following there grew into the nationally syndicated The Richard Simmons Show on TV, where he gave fitness instructions to viewers at home. The show ran for four years and earned multiple Emmy Awards. He later was behind one of the all-time biggest fitness video empires with his Sweat into the Oldies video series. Simmons released 65 fitness videos over the course of his life, which sold more than 20 million copies, and authored nine books and three cookbooks, according to his website. In January, he spoke out against an upcoming biopic being made about his life-starring actor and comedian Pauly Shore, which Simmons said he never permitted. I have never given my permission for this movie. So don't believe everything you read, he wrote on Facebook at the time. I no longer have a manager, and I no longer have a publicist. I just try to live a quiet life and be peaceful. Thank you for all your love and support. Gina Rowlands, a multiple Emmy winner whose captivating work in A Woman Under the Influence, and as the elder and dementia-ridden Ally in The Notebook also moved moviegoers, died Wednesday surrounded by family at her home in Indian Wells, California. She was 94. No cause of death was given, but the retired actress had been battling Alzheimer's disease, ironic in light of her famous film role. She retired from Hollywood in 2015 after earning four Emmy Awards, two Golden Globes, and two Oscar nominations. Her Oscar noms included A Woman Under the Influence and Gloria, both born of collaborations with her late husband, John Cassavetes. The duo made an indelible mark on American independent film, not just for the often revelatory end product, but also for the DIY way they made their movies. A Woman Under the Influence was prompted by Rollins, who wanted to delve into the difficulties faced by American women in their lives and relationships. When Cassavetes could not raise the money for the film, they mortgaged their house and borrowed from family and friends to make it happen. They shot with a crew made up in part by AFI students and not on a pricey, purpose-built soundstage set but in an actual residence in Hollywood. Rollins won primetime Emmys for the Betty Ford story, Face of a Stranger and Hysterical Blindness, as well as a daytime Emmy for the incredible Mrs. Ritchie. She earned five more nominations from the Television Academy, the first in 1985 for her part as the mother of a young man with AIDS in the groundbreaking and early frost. Her son, director and actor Nick Cassavetes, spoke to Entertainment Weekly about the notebook role Born in Cambria, Wisconsin, Roland moved to New York after a stint in regional theater and made her Broadway debut in The Seven Year Itch, touring in a national production of the play. In 1956, she starred in the Broadway play Middle of the Night opposite Edward G. Robinson. Roland's co starred in the 26 episode syndicated TV series Top Secret and guest starred on many TV anthology series. She later was a regular guest on many top TV shows. In 1959, Rollins appeared in the Western series Laramie and later alongside her husband, John Cassavetes, in the detective series Johnny Staccato. 
Rollins made her film debut in The High Cost of Living in 1958. Rollins and Cassavetes made 10 films together, including Faces, A Woman Under the Influence, which garnered a Best Actress nomination, and 1980's Gloria, which also spawned a Best Actress Oscar nomination. Rollins was married to him from April 9, 1954, until his death on February 3, 1989. Survivors include her husband Robert and children Nick, Alexandra, and Zoe Cassavetes. Maxie Solters, a writer, producer, actor, and third-generation Hollywood publicist, has died. She was 37. Maxie died unexpectedly on Thursday at Providence St. Joseph Medical Center in Burbank. A cause of death was not immediately available. She joined Scoop Marketing in 2012, continuing the family's legacy from her father Larry Solters and late grandfather Lee Solters. During her time at the agency, Maxie worked with such clients as the KIA Forum, the Hollywood Bowl, and Music Forward, among others. A vibrant and invaluable member of the Scoop marketing team, Maxie brought a unique blend of creativity, passion, and expertise to her work. The company shared in a statement, adding, her infectious enthusiasm, positivity, innovative ideas, and unwavering dedication made her an inspiration to all who knew her. Born March 27, 1987 in Sherman Oaks, Maxie studied theater at the University of Southern California before going on to work in film and television casting. As a writer, producer, and actress, Maxie had accumulated several credits to her name since 2006, including Climax, the 2017 web series she created and starred in. She was also a voting member of the Screen Actors Guild. Additionally, Maxie served as a coordinator for One Billion Rising, in addition to being involved with V-Day International and Women's Rights. Her advocacy work was a testament to her compassion and desire to create a better future, Scoop shared. Her unwavering optimism and kind heart touched the lives of many, leaving a lasting legacy of love and kindness. Maxie is survived by her longtime partner, Dim Dobrin, and their dog, Pookie, as well as her father, Larry, and his partner, Carol Greenhut, her mother, Deborah Graff, her aunt, Susan Reynolds, and her cousin, Jonah Reynolds. Phil Donahue, the longtime host of the trend-setting TV talk show, The Phil Donahue Show, died Sunday evening following a long illness, surrounded by family, including his longtime wife, actor Marlo Thomas. He was 88. His death was announced on the Today Show this morning. Today shared a statement from Donahue's family. See the announcement below. Calling Donahue a daytime staple, who pioneered a format that had been replicated by others, Today hosts noted that Donahue had been presented a Presidential Medal of Freedom by President Joe Biden just this summer. Donahue was married to Thomas for more than 40 years, having met when the That Girl star met Donahue when she was a guest on his talk show. The family statement reads, Groundbreaking TV talk show journalist Phil Donahue died Sunday night at home surrounded by his wife of 44 years, Marlo Thomas, his sister, his children, grandchildren, and his beloved golden retriever, Charlie. Donahue was 88 years old and passed away peacefully following a long illness. Donahue was born December 21, 1935 in Cleveland, and in the late 1950s embarked on a career as a radio journalist at first in his hometown and then Adrian, Michigan. But it was his TV work in Dayton, Ohio, that truly launched not only Donahue's career, but what would become a novel and highly influential style of daytime talk TV. In 1959, he was hired as a TV reporter at Dayton's WHIO, where his empathetic style of interviewing was first noticed by the public and his bosses. Within four years, he also had a radio call-in show called Conversation Piece for WHIO's affiliated radio station. Within several more years, he had taken his talk endeavor to TV hosting a business show and co-anchoring the evening news. In 1967, he was scooped up by a competing Dayton station, WLWD, who offered him a daytime morning interview show with a studio audience. With a studio audience that was treated by Donahue with respect, the host would make his way through the seats and hand over the mic to audience members with questions for guests. The Phil Donahue show became a Dayton area staple and favorite. Donahue is regarded as an early advocate for women, giving his largely female audience the opportunity to speak and ask questions on serious topics rather than the homey sea subjects that so many daytime talkers focused on.